Hello and welcome to the Pit Post Game Show here from the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Your Pit Beat writers here, Chris Carter and Stephen Thompson. Stephen is still in Dallas, Texas after Pitt took a shellacking in this one. 48-25, losing, losing their first game of the season. The Panthers now 7-1 and one on the season. We will see where their rankings fall uh, on this next day, losing to their first-ranked opponent. SMU looked dominant in this one. Stephen, a lot of things going down here. It was a crazy scene, it looked like, from television while I was back here in Pittsburgh. Uh, but certainly, I think the overarching tone is this was a, a blown opportunity or a missed opportunity from Pitt to have an exclamation point win and what could have been uh, which could have what could have separated the uh, the Panthers uh, just three days before uh, the college football playoffs first standings come out. Yeah, uh, a huge missed opportunity. I mean, primetime game against the first ranked opponent they've played all season, um, seven and zero with a ton of momentum. And like you said, the first chance to really make a statement that they were not only deserving of that ranking but deserving of a better ranking. And uh, Pitt wasn't even competitive at at any point in this game. Um, they, it was clear from the first from the jump that. They just did not come to play, and they didn't have anything uh, for the Mustangs tonight. I, I agreed. Let's get to our good, bad, and our ugly. I know there wasn't a lot of good, I, um, I, but I think if I had to pick one good thing, I'd say Desmond Reed still looks like he's a bad dude. 13 carries, 49 yards, and a rushing touchdown, um, you know, and his touchdown was very much earned. He had a sky over uh, a pile of guys at the line of scrimmage. Pitt's offensive line didn't win too many line of scrimmages on the day. He made plays there, also caught six passes for 44 yards, did drop a pass. It bounced off of him and it turned into an interception. But by that time, the game was well out of hand, um, you know, at that, at that situation. But I, I guess if I, had, if I had to pick one good from this game, it would just be that Desmond Reed still is dangerous. They just have to – they have they, they have to let get other things going for this pit team to be able to win other than their star running back. Steven, do you have any good to come from this game? Yeah, I do actually, uh, and it's the loss itself. I mean, this can be mm. a wake-up call for this team. Um, not that they really should have needed a wake-up call. I think this team should have remembered what it felt like to be 3-9 and nine last year and to lose games like this before. But, um, you know, Brandon George kind of alluded to this in the post-game press conference that uh, Pitt wasn't maybe very sharp in practice this week, um, and they need to have bring the same level of focus every week that they brought, uh, you know, to West Virginia and Cincinnati and uh, that they'll, they'll, they'll bring moving forward. But – um, this season is not over uh, by any means. I mean, Pitt, even though their odds of making the ACC championship game or the college football playoff um, are, are, are certainly much more slim, the odds there are not as good as they were before this game, but um, they're going to need to really lock in and they're going to really need to probably win out in order to get to either of those places uh, at the end of the season. So um, you hate to take a loss like this. I didn't think Pitt was going to go undefeated this season, obviously. Um, so anything hopefully they can turn around uh the bitter sting of this loss into maybe some more motivation moving forward yes yeah, certainly i mean you look at this situation and the, the missed opportunity you had here clemson lost this game you were in a position where you know if you won this game and you know you lost and you want you won all your rest of your games except clemson you could have set yourself up with a nice three game tie, uh, three team tiebreaker between yourself, Clemson, and SMU, presuming that if SMU won out here. Uh, but now Clemson had lost to Louisville. So now uh, it's actually a, a rougher – I think that makes the road even rougher because now SMU plays three games to finish the season. If they win out, they're going to be playing Miami most likely in the ACC championship game. But even if they lose one game, if Pitt wins out and beats Clemson, Clemson's out of the picture for the tiebreaker because that will be two conference losses for them now. Mm -hmm. And so then there would have to be something else that factors in to help Pitt get in unless Miami loses a game down the stretch here so uh lots of things the bad things to go around there well yeah and i mean uh, in addition to clemson three other top 20 teams lost um mm -hmm. i think all of those teams ranked ahead of Pitt. so uh, would have been you, a week to do it right you think about what they could have gained by beating a ranked team and uh, at the same time that a bunch of other teams ahead of them went down i mean it, it was a huge missed opportunity plain and simple Ab absolutely Let's talk about the bad here. I'm going to leave with my bad, and I highlighted this in my post game analysis. But I, I thought the missed tackles set the tone for the game early, early on. What's crazy was like you know, for as bad as Pitt looked coming out, I don't think it was a case of their game plan where they had, they were just so out of position because there were so many times where they were in position, they were just whiffing. You know, first possession of the game, uh, they they have a chance to force a third down. Rashad Battle has a guy wrapped up short of the marker, and then he tries to punch the ball out and just doesn't take him down, and the guy just. 
you know, just just get, catches his feet and takes off, turns it into a forty, turns an eight yard gain into a forty three yard gain. Uh, then the next scoring drive, they had a, they had a play, they had a play locked up, and uh, another play where the tight end was a check down on a third and long, and PJ O'Brien has the tight end and he tries to go low on him uh, and, and take his legs out, and the tight end makes a great play. Uh, Hibner, he he had a fantastic game for. Uh, for, for SMU, but he breaks the tackle, turns that into a 25 yard gain that, that extends the drive that eventually turns into their second touchdown. Um, and then their fourth touchdown of the night came on a, on a, on a swing pass, third and 11, where they were basically just trying to just see if they could just turn a, a little a quick play into a first down. And uh, Riley Gandy has the running back in his sights. With, you know, put, puts his head down, misses the tackle, the sidelines given up and it turns into like a 30 plus yard game. Um, and to me, like, you take away those plays, you turn those plays into stops and 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 and, and at least punts. Um, those are that's twenty one points off the board, and this is a completely different game. And regardless of how the rest of the game played out, that would have set a different tone and would have allowed Pitt's offense to, I think, go out with a different tone uh, in how it attacked the game. Uh, you know, uh, th- throughout the rest of the process. So to me, those missed tackles were huge, and, and it, it's disappointing for a pit defense that looked really sharp the last two weeks. Uh, but maybe to Brandon George's point, maybe they got to they got to lock it in, focus a little bit more uh, uh, in the in the coming weeks because next week they got four and four Virginia. That is a now a I mean it always kind of was a must win game, but now it's really a must win game. If they lose that game, everything's gonna it's gonna make that seven zero start feel like a mirage, and you cannot afford that right now if you're pit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, it was, you know, odd to watch. I mean, Pat Narduzzi, I think, benched Rashad Battle immediately after that missed tackle, uh, right. the, that drive after. And then, uh, you know, Timon Lynham misses a tackle uh, on the edge that allows a big play. And then Ryland Gandy does the same thing. And eventually he's down to putting Tamarian Crumpley, who has only played in garbage time so far this season out there at, at corner. He kept trying to find guys who can make plays for him. And, and there was really no one, especially at that corner spot. Um, you What's know, I can move bad? over to, I can move over to my bad. Um, and, you know, this wasn't the worst thing to happen tonight, but Ben Saul's streak of, I believe 13 straight uh, made field goals. It was a school record. It ended tonight. He missed a 47 yard field goal in the first half. And, um, you know, that kick alone wasn't, you know, the worst thing to happen tonight, like I said, but it was indicative of uh, just the way the night went. A guy who has been perfect all year, who has been, you know, arguably the best player at his position uh, in the country, just misses a kick that's been a layup for him all night. And uh, it was indicative of how the entire night went for Pitt. They did nothing uh, that they have done for the first, you know, seven games of this season. They just didn't look like themselves at all. And, you know, it, there was an element of snowballing. Um, all these mistakes that they had just, com- uh, you know, compounded and um, ended in something really, really bad. And, it just felt like it was not their night at all. And I think Saul's missing a kick that he's made a million times before uh, just kind of demonstrates that. Yeah, it just seemed like a bad night at Black Rock for, uh, for, for Pitt in this, in this situation. Let's move to our ugly. And there's a lot of bad and a lot of ugly in a game like this. But I- I'm going to hark on a, uh, an overarching issue that is now, I think, growing louder and louder with each week. But I think it's we can continue to confirm that Eli Holstein is struggling to see the field, especially the middle part of the field, where I, I think that Cade Bell's offense is giving him opportunities that he's not seeing. And which this, what's crazy is early on, I thought he played well. I thought the first couple drives, uh, though they only resulted in three points total, I, I thought he was taking the check downs. He was moving the ball, getting the ball out quick. That's what you wanted from Eli Holstein. But then when the game started to get out of hand, that didn't that, that stopped coming as much. He wasn't able to, to to keep drives going. Pitt on third downs, five of seventeen. They've been terrible on third downs for three straight games now on offense, and that to me is a very ugly sign of the, of things to come. If if the Pitt's not able to turn that back around, and who knows, maybe maybe this is maybe this is part of the wake up call that Eli Holstein needs. But you know, Stephen, we've been there for multiple games where he said, "This one's on me. This one's on me." When they were winning, and now. I think it's 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 becoming more and more on him, and the question is, what does he do when it is on him? How does he respond to to that? That to me is the big is the big thing here for Pitt. They if they're going to be a really good ACC team, they need Eli Holstein in this offense or somebody in this offense to to make big plays, whether that's Desmond Reed or Kanate Mumfield or Kenny Johnson. Um, because again, I still think even with um, even with this game, I still think that Pitt's receivers and, and skill players have you know, plenty of tent of talent and potential to be able to make big plays, but you need a guy who's going to work the Cade Bell system, get the ball out on time in rhythm. And that just didn't happen in this game. Yeah. 
I think Holstein really does have, have a ways to go. I mean, we saw in those first seven games some flashes. Of, and he's a redshirt freshman. The other part right. of this is that, like, expecting him to be Kenny Pickett in his final year is a lot to put on a guy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, you know, we've heard from Pat Narduzzi that Eli learns every week. He gets better every week, that he's in there studying his mistakes. He's taking responsibility for them. Um, and to be honest, I don't know if we've seen a lot of those mistakes corrected on the field. Um, yeah. I think that was pretty apparent tonight. Um, it was really apparent against, you know, Cal and uh, to a lesser extent Syracuse as well. Eli's got some holes in his game that uh, defenses are figuring out. and He's got to adjust and, and you know, get better from there. Uh, he is only a, a redshirt freshman, but, um, you know, progress isn't guaranteed and he's got to work at it and get better on his own. Sure. What's your ugly from this game? Yeah, my ugly uh, comes from SMU's official Twitter page. Um, just they were going after Pitt all night. Um, it was uh, a fun night to be the SMU social media administrator. Um, not only were they, you know, posting some pictures of sad Pitt fans um, from the television broadcast, but uh, they were poking fun at Pitt's Sharks uh, nickname for its linebackers. Um, you know, even the the players on the field, a, a tight end after a touchdown and uh, their place kicker after uh, a made field goal. We're doing the shark celebration. Um, and then, you know, they're recreating Mac Miller uh, album covers. And uh, their final score graphic uh, was captioned, good times never seem so good. Uh, so adding a little bit of insult to injury and uh, getting some jokes in uh, after blowing out Pitt. Uh, and probably, the you know, the biggest win for SMU football since the 80s, 1980s. I mean, uh, beat a ranked team in your first year as a power conference opponent in front of a in front of a sold out crowd um, in prime time, and um, you know the the world is kind of their oyster now, so they get to enjoy it, and they had their fun on social media for sure. They they certainly did, and they and like to the victory goal the spoils, you know. Right. There was a lot of trash talk. SMU was staying on the field, and after a while, there's nothing that you can say but the pit other than tip your hat and move on. Um, and to, to me, I think the big question is, does Pitt study this tape religiously or do they flush this game out? Because to me, I, I think, Stephen, that there are elements to this game to study. I think like like, like Eli Holstein hit in the middle part of the field. But for the tackling effort here, I, I truly think that Pitt's defense was in position for, I'd say, like 80 percent of the plays in this game. They have to make some of these plays that are right in front of them. And and we know that with their aggressive style, style of nature play, some of those deep passes that, that were hit on them. Those things are going to happen. The occasional, the occasional big play is going to happen. But when you saw how many explosives came from plays where it was a check down, the designed play was 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 there for Pitt to make the stop to keep it from extending drives. They didn't make those plays nearly enough in the in this game, and, and it led to big problems. And it kind of allowed SMU to break this game wide open, which put the the offense behind the eight ball, which then put you you know you're not always going to come back you know they we said this early in the season when they came back against Cincinnati and they came back against West Virginia we said hey they need to not be in this position they've done a good job since then to not be in that position again but they got in that position again in this game and this time they didn't pull it out so uh lots to learn from this game for Pitt we will keep you covered all throughout the weekend we'll see uh Stephen will have where uh they they fall in the rankings uh, to, uh, on Sunday, as far as the where the new top, you know, the AP poll comes out, will they fall out of the top twenty-five? I have a hard time seeing that, but I do think that they they will be in danger of being just out, just on the edge uh, edge of it after a loss like this uh, to a, to the number twenty team. But Pitt gets a chance to rebound next weekend, Saturday again, Saturday night. Oh, I hate everything uh, against Virginia, a four and four team. That is a, a must win game if Pitt wants to have any chance at a at the college football playoffs or the ACC championship game. From Chris Carden, Stephen Thompson, thanks again for tuning into the Pitt post game show here from the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. We'll see you uh, this, later this week for the Pitt mailbag show uh, right here from the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Thank you for checking out this content from Post Gazette Sports. If you watch this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. For all of the sports coverage the Post Gazette has to offer, visit post-gazette.com.